American prohibition was filled with, well, it was uniquely American. It was filled with every conceivable type of person there was in the country, rich, strong, poor, uh, oddballs, gadflies, strange people. One of the stranger people is this guy, Huey McLoon of Philadelphia. What a great name for him. McLoon, a reporter wrote, was a cripple who basked in the shadow of the strong, who lived in a heaven of his own consequences. Huey was a hunchback with sharp Irish features, eyes that darted this way and that, and no conscience. No conscience? I don't about that. But anyway, he worked as a copy boy for the sports department at, the, at a newspaper, the Philadelphia Eating Ledger. As a result of an accident when he was a boy, he was left dwarfed and hunchback. Uh, he was, and this is again a quote, so crippled he could barely walk. At his best weight, he weighed around maybe 80 pounds. He was overly talkative, gargantuous, outgoing. He was chosen as the bat boy and the mascot of the Philadelphia Athletics, which today wouldn't happen. It, it wouldn't be done. And although the f team finished last in, uh, the, in the end of the seasons, uh, the A's rubbed, <laughs> Jesus, rubbed his hump and, oh, yeah, yeah, for good luck. And while well, he tended to their bats, he became a local celebrity. He was really, sincerely, much loved by the crowds. He would get standing ovations when he came by the field. Uh, people would stand up. They'd want to get their photo with him. He was very popular with bootleggers and gunmen. They just liked having him around. So just after World War I, Max Bobo Hoff, the reason they called Hoff Bobo was he was always crying poverty. He was wealthy beyond and very mean guy. Uh, he was the head of the Philadelphia gangs, sort of. Uh, so Huey McLoon announces he's going to quit his job and he's going to go on Bobo Hoff's payroll. Can you imagine there was a time when you could say that i'm going to quit my legitimate job and go to work for a bootlegger uh a reporter said so cautions i don't think you should do that and McHugh said look i get 20 bucks a week here i ain't got no education so where do i go on a paper bobo's going to give me a yard a week i think that's a hundred i don't have to puck a rod and i'm too little for rough stuff a hundred a week is a lot of dough and crooked hacks don't live anyway okay Although he was little, uh, more than the gang's mascot, I mean, it's probably all he was, uh, he thought he was Bobo Hoff's right-hand man. And Bobo loved taking him out and buying him wonderful clothes. He was always, in, both of them were impeccably dressed, and they carried a, a cane with <laughs> an onyx top and so forth. Uh, Bobo loved women, and so McLoon always had a tall, lean blonde with him, if you could believe this. And he would go to the finest restaurants and he'd call a restaurant, call the reporters and say, look, I'm here with a tall blonde, come and get my photos. They loved it. It so happened that on August 9th, 1928, uh, around two o'clock in the morning, McLoo closed the speakeasy he worked on, uh, which he operated with a, a, another gangster. Uh, there had been an outbreak of a, of a gang war in Philadelphia in the weeks that had passed. Uh, McLoon was with William Smiling Bill Meester and John Melko, alias Joseph Fries. They uh, were local bootleg figures uh, who were with Mickey Duffy. They were walking down 10th Street and they stopped at a corner to talk. A sedan comes by filled with people um, and opens up a burst of guns and they let loose and uh, McLoon was shot right in the face, the neck and the chest. He staggered, uh, tumbled down a flight of steps of a basement in a nearby shoe repair shop. He died almost instantly. He was 26 years old. Uh, the men later claimed they got word out it was a mistake. Uh, and, and it probably was. They, they probably weren't intending to shoot him at all, but rather were more than probably trying to shoot Mickey Duffy's guys. Uh, the assassins were said to be Shorty Feldman and Daniel O'Leary uh, and Francis Peterson. Uh, a guy named Grossman was the driver. Uh, the third man in the group, uh, Meister, was hit 13 times. The guy who was standing with, uh, w with McLoon was shot 13 times by shotgun fragments. Uh, to this day, no one knows. It's an unsolved murder. It did touch off a huge grand jury investigation. Uh, that uncovered corruption of bootleggers and uh, City Hall. Huey McLoon's body lit, laid in state, really, in, in uh, South Philadelphia. 15,000 people, this is from three sources, 
most granted now most of them were just curious came by the the funeral parlor and it was a sweltering hot august uh pay the respects just to look at the little man in the coffin um one guy renoted years later he said when i looked in the coffin what i saw was a very young almost a childish looking twisted dark-haired little irishman laid out in his evening clothes with a white aster uh, in his buttonhole uh, by some magic touch the papers informed the multitudes who were turned away the evidences of gunfire which tore out an eye and bored through his cheek had been removed again the murder re remains unsolved until this day